What's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next example, dealing with polynomial functions in advanced functions. So what we have to do is find the symmetry of these functions, right? Are they going to be odd, even, or neither? And starting off with part A, we got f of x equals x cubed minus 5x plus 3. So notice that this is a cubic function here, an expanded one. Notice that b and c they are actually factored once, right? So I feel like part A is going to be a little bit easier. Now, remember, if f of negative x is going to equal f of x, then the function is even. And then if f of negative x is going to equal negative f of x, then the function is going to be odd. And then if it's uh, neither of these, then the function is going to be neither. So first step always, Let's find what f of negative x is going to be. So what we would do is we'd plug in negative x into the different x values. Now negative x to the power of an odd exponent is always going to be negative x to that same exponent like that. Because there's like a negative 1 here, right? Negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 3, right? If you had negative x to the power of an even exponent, it would end up just being positive x to that even exponent. But if this is odd, you'd end up with negative x to the power of that odd exponent, right? So this would be negative x to the power of 3. Negative 5 times negative x gives us positive 5x, and then that is positive 3. So this here is what f of negative x is equal to, the simplified function. Now, first check we do is f of negative x equal to the original function, f of x, right here. Well, is it? No, it's not, right? We got x cubed minus 5x plus 3. Here we got negative x cubed plus 5x plus 3. So these are definitely not the same polynomials. And so just from that alone, we know that the function for sure is not even. Okay, so the next check that we have to do is check if this f of negative x is going to equal negative f of x. So the next function we have to find is negative f of x. And all you do in that particular case is you put a negative in front of the entire function that you're dealing with. Well, distribute that negative into all the expressions and we basically end up with that right here. So that's the simplified function for negative f of x. That's a simplified expression. So let's do a check. Does f of negative x, this, equal negative f of x, this here in red? Well, notice it almost does. Negative x cubed, negative x cubed, 5x, 5x, but it's the constant that's different. So 3, negative 3, right? And that's a difference right there. And so they're not the same. And so that we know that this function is not odd. And so it's not even, it's not odd. The function in part A as a result is neither. Now moving on to part B, this one's going to be a little bit more intense because this polynomial here is in factored form. Whenever you're given polynomials in factored form and you're dealing with f of negative x and negative f of x, it's a lot tougher of an algebraic process. And I went through examples like this in the same section. So I'm assuming you've watched those examples before watching this one. So in this particular video, we might go through it a little bit quicker. But, um, well, a couple of options. We could also expand all this, but notice that, right, this is going to take us forever to expand. We would have, what, two, two, five, six brackets to expand. Okay, so can't really do that. That's not an option. So we got to find a simplified expression for f of negative x from this factored form. So what we have to do is we got to plug in negative x for all of the x values, right, in all of these brackets here. And so here is where it's going to get super nuanced. So just be careful. Oh, and look, I'm already screwing up. This is two. 
this is two, right? So make sure you're getting all the details down here and just be careful with your steps. What you wanna do is we gotta factor out a negative from all of these brackets because we can't have a negative x plus something because then it's gonna be hard to compare to the original function because notice the original function, it has x plus four, x minus one, x plus two, right? So what we're gonna to have to do is from this first bracket, we got to factor out a negative one, but because there's this two here, we have to square. Basically, let me show you this on the side. If we got something like this, the process is basically, we're taking out a negative one, that changes to x minus four. Within the bracket, we have this square, and then we're distributing that exponent to the negative one, and then the x minus four, like that. Okay, so that's what's happening behind the scenes. And I'm kind of like skipping this step here in the main process, just because then it's just gonna get too hectic. All right, but that's basically what's happening. So I'm taking out a negative one from this bracket. I have to square it. And then I'm left with x minus four. And then that's getting squared. Same thing here, taking out a negative one. There's an exponent two here, so that's getting squared. What are we left with? X plus one, right? If I take out a negative one from negative X minus one, I'm left with X plus one, and that's getting squared as well. From this bracket, taking out a negative one, there's no other exponent here, like two, there's like an imaginary one, so it's just negative one that comes out of that. That will become X minus two, and I'm taking a negative one out of this, it becomes two X plus three, like that. Right, all of the signs are changing. Okay, so just be super careful in this step. You have to factor out basically a negative one for all of these. Is just remember that if there's an exponent there, you got to take that negative one to that exponent. There was no exponents here. There was like an imaginary one, so we're just taking negative one to the power of one. Right here, there's an imaginary one, negative one to the power of one. Okay, so what's going on here? We got a negative one. There's like this negative one here. Now negative one squared, that's just positive one. We got x minus four squared. Negative one squared, that's like positive one. x plus one squared. And now notice we got this negative one here and this negative one here. I'm just gonna multiply those right there. Kind of combine them together. That's gonna be positive one. We got x minus two, two x plus three. And we just gotta get rid of all of these ones and negative ones. So we'll have negative one times one times one times one, which because of this negative one, it gives us a negative right there. And then we're just left with our factors. X plus one squared, X minus two, two X plus three, like that. Okay, and this here, this final line, simplified polynomial, notice that that right there is basically our simplified, sorry, there should be a negative here. Okay, don't forget that. This is basically our simplified expression for f of negative x, this whole thing right here. And so now we could use this to compare to the original function. Does f of negative x, does this equal to this? No, it doesn't. Completely different intercepts, right? Here we have an intercept of four, here it's negative four. Here it's negative one, positive one. Positive two, negative two. Negative three over two, positive three over two. So both of those are not the same, and so we know that this function is not even. Now, to check whether it's odd, we have to check does negative, or uh, f of negative x equal negative f of x. Well, thankfully, negative f of x is super easy. All we do is we multiply this whole thing by negative one. And so all that does is it basically whatever uh, coefficient is in front here, this is factored, it just changes the sign of that coefficient. So this negative one here would basically change to like a positive one. But then all of the factors would stay the same. So when it's expanded, you got to expand that negative one inside the entire function and then change all the signs. But if it's a factored form, you just multiply that negative one by the coefficient in front. So let me actually rewrite this fully just so you could have it as a reference. So I have a negative and then I'm rewriting that entire original function 
as it originally was, right? This is the um, f of x inside this big bracket. And then we got the negative on the outside. And then it's just negative times negative, which is positive, right? So it's like an imaginary positive one out there. And then all these factors, they are staying the same like that. Okay, so if this was again, expanded, if it was an expanded polynomial, like in part A, you got to distribute that negative inside everything. But when it's factored like this, everything is multiplying, not adding or subtracting, just multiply the negative one with whatever is in front there, right? So that is the expression for negative f of x is negative f of x equal to f of negative x? Well, no. Notice that the intercepts are totally different again. And so from there, comparing this to that, we know that this function is not odd. And so in part b, this function is neither as well. Yo, yo, what's up? Quick little intermission here. Wanted to mention a few things quickly and we'll get right back into the question. First off, if you are getting value from this video, if you can please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it does help me out a lot. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there is a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com, where all my courses are organized so you can watch the videos in order and I'd recommend doing so because lots of concepts carry over from one video to the next. Also, for lots of the courses, at the end of the chapters, you can find tests that you can practice with and the tests have video solutions as well. Number three, if you feel like you need personalized help in tutoring, give me a shout. I currently tutor students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. You can text me, we can discuss availability and then we can book a session. My contact details are on my website. And lastly, feel free to forward the website to any of your friends who are also taking the course, who you feel can benefit from these videos as well. Hit me up on all my socials. It's all things mathematics for all of them. Back to the video, we go. Now, the final one, part C, another factored polynomial. We got x minus one times x plus three times x plus one times 3x minus 9. Now, one thing I like to always do uh, with the original function, which I didn't mention in parts a and b because we didn't really have to do anything there, is I like to make sure that everything is fully factored. And notice that with this 3x minus 9, I could take out a 3 from that bracket. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out a 3, put it in front. I'll have x minus 1 x plus 3, x plus 1, and then what are we left with there? If we take out a 3, we're left with x minus 3, like that. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that step, but personally, I like to do it. If it's a factored polynomial, I like to make sure that it's fully factored. So if there's any constants I could take out from any of the brackets, I like to do that and then put them in front. And so this is the f of x that I'm going to be using throughout the process here. So here you want to now find a simplified expression for f of negative, just like we did in the last one. So we would plug in negative x for all the x values. And you got to be super careful here. Got plus 3, negative x plus 1, and then we got negative x minus 3, like that. Right, And we can't just leave these as negative x's here because we have to be able to compare it um, to this original function that we have. Notice this original function, it just has x values in the factor. So we can't have these negative x's here. So what you want to do, actually, you know what? Let me um, create a little bit more room here. What you want to do is basically factor out a negative one from all of these brackets. So if I take out a negative one, I'll have x plus one. If I take out a negative one from this bracket, I would have x minus three. If I have a negative one from this bracket, I'll have an x minus one. And then if I take out a negative from this bracket, I'll have x plus three, like that. And then let's simplify all these negative ones. Now, how many of them are there? One two, three, four. So it's like negative one to the power of four, which is going to be positive one. So we would just end up with a three in the front. We'd have a positive one there as well. We don't have to write that. And then we'd have x plus one, x minus three, x minus one, and then x plus three, 
like that. Now, if there were three negative ones, it would be a negative one to the power of three, and that would be a negative, and we would attach it with this uh, three here. So we'd have a negative three in front if there was an odd number of negative ones, but there's an even, uh, even number of negative ones, so it would just uh, stay as positive three. And then this here is the simplified function for f of negative x. And if you look carefully, this function and this function f of x, they're actually the same, right? So we got the three in the front. Now this x minus one, it changed into x plus one, but notice that this x minus one here, we have another x minus one here, x plus three, x plus 3, x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 3, x minus 3, right? So even though the factors in those specific spots changed, the other factors changed as well, and then those other factors ended up being the same factors as the original function, right? So these two functions, they're exactly the same. So we know that f of negative x is equal to f of x, and therefore this function is even. All right, so with these, um, with these kinds of questions where you're checking the symmetry of both expanded and uh, factored polynomials, the process is a little different. The expanded ones, it's a lot easier, right? It's a uh, less hectic algebraic process. When they're factored, it takes a little bit more effort, but nevertheless, this is the process that you go through. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.